Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Hot Wheels Unleashed. <laughs> Only kidding. Welcome to Forza Horizon 5's Hot Wheels expansion here. Um, this is what? Coming out on Friday. So this is what? Day four of the expansion now or something like that. And... I have so much to say about this. It's kind of cool. So unfortunately, I am starting this video uh, just as it's becoming dawn. Uh, nighttime in this world is really cool, but even still, like, look at that sunrise over these three different little islands here. Um, it's just super cool. You know, just We're way up in the sky over uh, the Mexican map here of Forza Horizon 5. And like I said, it's just, I'm kind of having a hard time describing all of this because, I mean, just look at this thing. It, it feels like it's like half of the map below me up here, up in the sky. So it really, I was concerned how long it was taking Playground Games to come out with this, but considering the vast scale of all of this, it's just absolutely incredible, and I completely understand why it took so long, because you have to play test to make sure that each one of these parts, you know, interacts well with one another, that there are not too many bugs that, you know, graphically it all works, and there's, uh, yeah, it's just a lot. So, of course, with this game, or with the expansion, as you can tell here, you've got plenty of loops that you can enjoy. And they finally bring back from Forza Horizon 3 uh, Hot Wheels in general. So you've got, you know, a lot of these cool Hot Wheels, iconic Hot Wheels cars, uh, like Twin Mill and Diora. Um, I'm blanking on the rest of them. I think there's like one called Rat Rod or Red Rod. Bone Shaker, Rip Rod, uh, Nash Metropolitan Custom 57, of course, Twin Mill, and then uh, Ford F five dually custom hot rod um kind of mouthful of names but you know regardless i digress so welcome to the ice cauldron uh of course i would be playing a hot wheels car uh assuming that they had some more s1 classes here uh i just kind of wanted to describe a little bit of the quote unquote the story mode so you've got a couple of different sets of missions. First of all, there's like uh, the general story mode where it's you are uh, talking with some of the NPCs. They're giving you kind of like a history lesson of Hot Wheels as you're racing some of the iconic cars from the franchise. And then there are some of these events here where they're intermixed in between some of those uh, story missions where it's just kind of general uh, stick with a certain class and uh, most of them are just kind of playing around these little loop-de-loops and whatnot. And then a couple of other ones are more uh, experiencing, like, driving along the snow and whatnot, and maybe having some ice patches, more involved with the environment, some more cross-country, I suppose. Um, but the thing that was really interesting is that when you first start this game, um, it's just kind of like whatever car you buy, you can buy, you can play pretty much every type of race in whatever class you feel like. Um, but as soon as you get the expansion here, they're simply saying you have to stick within performance rank B. Doesn't matter what car, it has to be B rank. And then once you beat the final kind of race of that uh, section of the storyline, uh, you unlock more of the uh, story missions, per se, where you learn more history about Hot Wheels, and then it'll be all specifically in A-Class, and then so on and so forth. Uh, going up the ranks, you have to get, I believe, what they call medals. So by completing races, you get medals by you know doing your PR events, whether it be uh, kind of the drift zones or the speed traps um, or the top speed runs, you know that kind of stuff, you get medals that way. And honestly, the progression is pretty good. Uh, it's, it, it paces well. Uh, I want to say it's taken me probably, you know, an hour. Eh, actually, it's probably taken an hour to get up to S. So about half an hour per class if you're really focused on it. Um, I actually spent a lot of time just discovering the roads. And I am kind of stuck. I've got 174 out of 175. 
and I have no idea where that last road is. It's really difficult to see on the map, though, because everything is going, crossing over each other and whatnot. So I wonder if there's a road underneath, like, an intersection area that I, I can't see. So my only complaint is uh, not having the ability to see, like, layers of the map and whatnot. But uh, that's just a completely random off-the-wall tangent. So I digress. Yeah, let me give you a quick overview of the map here. So we've got this middle area, the Nexus. So that's where the uh, Horizon Festival kind of is, where you can buy and sell your cars and whatnot. Uh, kind of in this f middle area connecting the three islands. Of course, we've got the Ice Cauldron here with uh, these really cool volcanoes and kind of that snowy island bit. Uh, then you've got the uh, Forest Falls, again, kind of the uh, waterfalls down in here, kind of just like a mid Midwestern uh, or West Coast kind of foresty area. And then finally, you've got the uh, Giants Canyon, again, very inspired by Mexico, using a lot of the assets from Guanajuato, but of course, incorporating some really cool canyons. So uh, after completing many, many, many different types of events, uh, we are finally now in S1. So I am very happily going 200 miles an hour on this magnetic strip of track. So the one other kind of gripe that I have is that um, kind of the track design in a way. So I, again, do really like how it's got all these twists and turns and loops and chicanes and all the rest of it all in the sky. But it seems like that there are sections that definitely are intended to be like a one-way only zone. So incorporating that open-worldness into this area is a little bit difficult because on start, you're stuck with the uh, Class B kind of cars. And when they're kind of going up and up and up one of the loops uh, without any of those boosts or anything, they kind of stall out really quickly. So trying to get a good run up going the opposite way of what the, the map was intending is really difficult up until, honestly, probably about S1. Uh, A-Class struggles here and there, but if you have a really good run-up, it should be all right. Uh, so here we are with the McLaren F1. We are shedding weight, shedding our wing. Uh, fortunately, we don't need too much downforce as the track is uh, pretty grippy, pretty sticky to begin with. Oops. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, recover, 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 recover. <laughs> I honestly do want to be doing some online races up in the Hot Wheels expansion area, but I think you have to beat all the story missions, or quote-unquote story missions, first uh, before you're able to unlock the online play, because I've checked I checked a couple of different uh, maps, and the only thing that you can do so far is solo, and I want to say co-op. So, really limited on our options here. So now, uh, after playing through the sky in the Nexus, we're now checking out a little bit of Forest Falls. And again, this area is just quite majestic uh, throughout the day there. You know, we got some of that steam coming off of the waterfalls, getting some of the sun glowing through it all as we make our way back up into the Nexus. Topping out at 210 miles, 214, still climbing. Uh, and across the middle section, first place once again. So we are now in Giants Canyon here, uh, changing up a little bit, playing as the 2017 Ford GT. And just wanted to give a little bit of an example of what the other kind of area of the map looks like before we jump into the story mode, quote unquote, which is known as Hot Wheels, or more or less a history of Hot Wheels. I, again, I'm trying to recall while racing, a little bit difficult. Uh, so yes, as you can tell, very much so inspired by kind of a deserty landscape. And the main difference from this area to Guanajuato is that these are this area has these giant rock outcroppings, these huge rock walls, and then you've got these loops kind of going up and around these these outcroppings, going for a very cool and unique experience. And then we're doing kind of this little. Uh, turn coming on up here. So being uh, using a manual transmission in this area, in, in this kind of expansion more or less, is very difficult because you're trying to keep an eye on what you're doing and trying to remember which gear you're in. And then sometimes like you'll just hit like random speed boost or you know you have something like that happen where 
you'll just lose grip completely on no particular reason they decided to have just this little strip of orange in the middle of of these grav magnetic rails so then you just lose grip and you're spinning all over the place and you're up you're in 12th position out of the end of it and it's like okay whatever guys so yeah some of the speed boosts uh haven't really seen many of them yet i hope to pretty quickly here so you guys can kind of see what i'm on about here but yeah with those speed boosts yeah we kind of saw one earlier too earlier where they just kind of take your car and they just shove it way past top speed and they you know over rev the engine so hard so it's like if you see a, a boost approaching just slam it into sixth gear and it'll probably bring you to the to your uh, rev limiter pretty quickly eighth position ouch um <laughs> i'll come back and do that later but not tonight not tonight that's for sure